Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Coach Fury here today, and we are back with the latest episode of our Chicago Bulls rebuild in Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 21. And well, what a season we had! Um, for those of you who've watched the previous episodes, you'll have seen that we we went from probably at the beginning of the season being a, a team that was rebuilding, hence rebuilding the Bulls. Looking at developing young young talent, eventually over time, probably being in the playoffs to hopefully eventually um, competing for a title. But our first season went a little bit better than expected. We got all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals before we got bumped out by the the Milwaukee Bucks. And well, we are now in the off season. Safe to say that uh, we've got many many questions to to ask ourselves, many many decisions to make, and we have draft, free agency, summer league. All of these fun things to happen, contract decisions, lots of things we've got to try and break down over the next, probably next couple of episodes, I would imagine. But first thing is first, we have gone to the off season. We have our ownership call. So let's dive straight into that and see what the owner has to say and see what we think our expectations are going to be for next season. So hello, Jerry Reinsdorf. Uh, how do we think the performance went this season? I think... To be honest with you guys, I don't know about you, but I think I did an excellent job. We took a team that was not expected to make the playoffs. We made the playoffs, okay, barely, but we managed to make real noise in the playoffs and get one game away from being in the championship finals. So I think we did an excellent job. Well, we met on a the goals talked about at the beginning of the season. Still don't have the roster talent he wants. would like to come back for another season. Well, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, I'm not sure what roster talent you would like, but... We've got some really good young players that we're building around, um, and uh, I'm confident that we will will be in great shape going forward. So let's advance the game on so we get to our second call. For those of you who know, we have a second call with the ownership after this one to discuss expectations for the upcoming season. So quick chat about the upcoming season to tell me how is the team going to fare this season? Well, we could be really ambitious here and say we are going to make a great playoff run again. But we need to. I feel we still need to be a bit conservative on our approach. We obviously had a very good season, a very good run in the playoffs. Our regular season record, though, was still only 0.500. Granted, that was through a lot of changes. We did lots of deadline day deals to bring in different talent. But I think that being said, in the Eastern Conference, with the talent we have coming back, we should be a playoff team, in my opinion. So should be a playoff team. It's better than not making that. But it's better than be a short stop on the way to the top. Well, of course it's going to be. Of course it's going to be. How much should this team cost? Well, I think I think we'll we'll we'll, we'll be around the cap. To be honest with you, we, I want to try and utilise some of that cap space that we have to bring in some talent. We'll talk about that one in in a minute once we come off this call and, and look at the contracts. But clearly, we um, we are going to be right about the cap. In my opinion, I think we'll be. Around there, we're going to utilise that. We've got a couple of draftees probably coming in, some cap space, so I think we'll be right around the cap. Okay, good luck with this season. He is pretty happy with that. That's good. So let's take a look at the uh, the office dashboard. So those objectives are still, I think, the same. Uh, meet the playoffs. Um, you know, make the playoffs, which is what we've set, and get a four-star roster player. So. In terms of that, we obviously don't have a four-star roster player at the moment. We have some guys who have the potential to be four-star in um, in Brandon Clark. and uh, Jaron Jackson could possibly be a four-star or Kobe White. So we, we do have some talent there. And clearly, we're going to use the draft and free agency to, to hopefully bring in that four-star talent that he wants. Um, it's clear our ownership wants us, obviously, to continue to make the playoffs. We need to bring a championship back to Chicago, but also to get the right level of, of talent in to do that, which is in line with our thinking as well. So as I said on, on the uh, the call with the ownership, we, we actually have a really interesting opportunity here. So you can see here at the moment we we were well above the um we're well above the salary cap in, in terms of our cap status. But in terms of committed contracts, we've only got 83 million on the books at this moment in time. And I believe the salary cap is around about 120 million approximately. So we are going to have, granted we're bringing in a draft D, so let's assume that's about five or six million. We're going to have um, quite a considerable amount of money to play with, I think, approximately about 30 million, which probably won't get us a, you know, a, a Hall of Fame type player. I'm not sure who's actually available in free agency at the moment, but you know, we won't be able to do that unless we moved some of the the bigger players in, in Young or Satoransky um, to clear up some of that cap space. We're obviously not going to um, 
to bring um, Arcanarch, Arc Arcadia Kono back um, with his team option. So we, we're going to um, to definitely not take that one up for three minutes. That will give us some money back. And it's clear that, as I said at the beginning of the last, at the end of the last episode, actually, the the back court is the the issue. Um, clearly, clearly, Eric Bledsoe is is not really the type of point guard we want. We want someone who's a bit better there. Um, I'd love to have Eric Bledsoe playing shooting guard or six man. Realistically, we have some question marks about whether Kobe White will continue to develop. If he does, he's probably again he looks more like a shooting guard than a, a natural point guard as such. So many many questions we've got to try and answer here through this through the off season. But that's a bit of a quick narrative in terms of the uh, the contract situation. But let's let's continue to move on. Um, we will get ourselves forward to the uh, the coach hiring stage. I don't think we are going to hire any other coaches. I'm I'm pretty happy with what we've got here. Our, our you know Billy Donovan looks like a fairly good coach in terms of what we want. His his strategy, evaluating offense, development, etc. is all still pretty good and in line with what we want. And I'm not I'm not going to play around too much with this. I'm happy to to keep these guys here. So we're going to quickly fast track past this one, advance the entire period. We don't have much budget in the coach hiring stage anyway because we to fire them obviously we have to pay a little bit of a cap penalty against that in terms of our budget. So we'll, we'll leave it as is. Um, in terms of the signings around the league, um, Hoiberg has gone to the Hornets, uh, dunlevy has gone to the Timberwolves, so is Alvin Williams, that's interesting. Uh, but not a lot else, really the Hornets and the Timberwolves were the only sort of signings that happened there. So in terms of staff, I think there's probably some interesting staff actually still available. If we look it up, um, so you've got Jeff Van Gundy. I mean, they're all wanting huge amounts of money that we simply just can't afford, and they're not much better than than what we have, to be honest with you. Uh, in terms of player development, oh, Watson is the best guy there, but nothing, nothing else that you know is, is better than than Donovan that we have. So we're, we're going to leave it as is. Let's uh, let's check this in boxes, see what we've got here. Okay, so we've got some salary cap changes actually this season. So. Oh, okay. The salary cap is actually lower than I thought it was. I thought it was about 120 million, but it's 113. That still gives us about 20 million to play with. Um, still a bump up from last year's cap, of course, um, which is good. So that is an extra bit of money for us to play with. And we move on past the rookie combine. Let's take a little look at the uh, the draft here. So in in terms of the draft itself, let's go and have a look at the magazine. That's probably the best thing for us to have a look at at this stage. In terms of the draft, um, it's clear that they feel Andy Blackman is the number one prospect, a four-star guy. Some phenomenal numbers, actually, from college. I'm not sure what college that actually is. Where's the college stats? I'm not sure where that is. But in, in terms of that, 28 and 14 and 2 is, is pretty good. Then we've got Elder, 7 foot 2 centre. Okay. So big men are being taken early on in this draft, it looks like, from what they've projected. Then Douglas Graham, who looks like a pretty atrocious prospect. He's only two stars. Ed Jefferson, a three-star prospect here, a shooting guard. Tom Brown, a power forward, a four-star. Okay, so this is really interesting because there's clearly some arbitrage to probably be done in this draft where it looks like the uh, the, the the order we've got here is, is, is very varied in terms of skill and ability. Let's scroll down and see what the hell they have us taking. So for those of you who don't know, we have the 17th pick in this draft, which was, I think, New Orleans pick that we picked up as part of the uh, the Bledsoe deal, I believe, to send um, Levine to, to New Orleans. They obviously made the playoffs, which was a bit of a disappointment from our perspective because we I was hoping that would be a lottery pick, but it wasn't. So in terms of who they have us taking, they have us at the moment taking someone called Michael Daniels, a shooting guard, who is not particularly that spectacular. I mean, clearly they obviously think we, we need a shooting guard not necessarily we'll just take the best player available but let's go on to the uh the, the workouts and have a look so in terms of our staff prospects so they obviously have blackman harris is obviously the second guy in terms of ability you can see here looking at the staff ability from, from the stars there's not there's no real elite players in this draft it looks like there's a lot of mid-tier guys so that that's interesting in itself in that probably we've got the right pick in the first round in that there's no point having a top pick because there's not really any standout prospects and everyone seems to be in the middle so that's that's an interesting thing from our perspective the first thing i will do though is i will go to these none players so there's a few of them 
and we'll just have a little flick through and see if any of them are of interest because we, obviously we don't have any stats on them so it's pretty clear that we need to to scout them uh, so we will invite anyone who looks remotely decent um, in terms of star prospect because you know that that might be a little bit of a steal for us if, if no one else is looking at them so let's uh, let's grab these guys if anyone is a three or four star prospect really there is, is we're going to work out because we need we just need some details on them and then we will go back to our staff list and have a look so realistically elder's not going to drop to us i mean if, if any of these guys sort of drop that we feel are good and um, we will certainly just pick them up blind we, we won't waste time scout you know working them out we've only got 14 workouts to play with so in terms of harris where have they got harris going the harris is one we should definitely look at you can see here i can't see him on this list so we will definitely work out harris blackman we're also not going to look at he's just go number one a bannon Yeah, we'll certainly look pick you because you're supposed to go late, but you're higher on our scout on our, our um on our coaches list. Daniels is the guy that we've expected to take according to this. So we will work him out because that's a good good sort of balance for us to see how that looks. Jenkins, you're expected to go six overall. I mean I will work you out just because you're six foot six point guard who actually seems to have some good potential there. Shrine or shine, sorry, we're we're not gonna work him out, I don't think. Uh point guard, six foot one, I'm I'm not too worried about that. We'll work out Lane and Anderson I think was projected to go below us, so we'll certainly work him out. And Smith. And Ed Jefferson, I think you're predicted to go very high. Yes you are. So we'll have a little look at the uh the network, sort of the, the ESPN I guess style system as well if there's anyone in here that is, is probably looking like they might drop down below us who, who looks like a good prospect as well because we obviously want to we want to have a good feel for how the how these sort of the better players will, will be projected that's that's the key thing here not necessarily looking at position because to be perfectly honest with you we we don't have a dying need for a certain position as uh, in terms of youth we've kind of got that all over the place so jefferson blackman yeah we've looked at tim banks where are you looking to go we'll work you out as well and eagle let's go back to our list here shine okay we'll work you out shine you're a three-star prospect according to our coaches yeah jefferson elder blackman we're not going to look at curry we'll look at wall we'll look at and I think that is all of our invites. So I think we're done. So obviously we've, we've gone very top heavy, basically because I just want to now that 17th pick. I'm happy picking blind if we've got a second round pick. I'm happy to pick blind there because it's not a guaranteed contract. But for the, um, the main pick, we obviously need to make sure that we get that right. So we're gonna run these workouts. And we're going to advance the draft, I think, unless we have any other emails of interest. We've got a free agency evaluation. We'll, we'll come back to that next episode. The rookie workouts are done. Um, yep, we are going to just do a quick save here in case we have a crash during the draft. And we're going to go straight into it. And let's see how we get on. So, draft is underway. Let's start and see. So in, in terms of the um, first pick is Washington. Let's uh, let's have a little look and see how it goes. So they have taken Harris number one. Okay, so a guy that we've scouted thinking that he wouldn't go in the top 17. Four-star prospect. Interesting that he was taken first overall. Let's see what they say about him, actually. So a prolific scorer, apparently, he gets dunks. Let's see what the panel says about this. Oh, one of them definitely did not like it. But there are better options on the board. 
Ooh, okay. They both of them didn't like that. They both thought Ed Jefferson looks like should have gone first. So maybe Washington have blown it with that first pick. Let's go on to the second pick and see who Miami takes. Andy Blackman. So another. I think he was projected to go to two overall. Um, yeah, certainly was not going to drop. He looked like a really good prospect. Good size as well for his position. Looked like he can play on both sides of the ball from from what we saw in the description. As I said, 28-14 and, and two blocks per game is something not to be uh, sniffed at. But Ed Jefferson is dropping, which is interesting. Yeah, they, they were happy with that. I think he was pegged there by the, the panel and by the, 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 uh, the media to go number two overall. They were both happy with that one. So let's move on to pick number three. Who did the Timberwolves take? Tom Brown. Okay. This is really interesting now. Ed Jefferson is dropping. Wonder where he's going to drop to actually. We'll we'll leave Tom Brown for a minute. Let's go to the war room and have a look. Very interesting. He's I mean obviously from our perspective. He was um he was projected to be a you know, second second pick. But you know, our scout our, our staff only scouted him as a as a one star, looks like here. Very interesting, very interesting. I mean, the network has him as a four star. We have him just as a three star. But that that's that's fascinating. So Tom Brown has gone um, third overall. Let's see who goes fourth overall. Ed Jefferson. There we go. So he doesn't fall that far. Be very interested to see what the panel says about him here. An elite athlete, aggressive defender. Looks like he's a good defender. Good outside shot. I mean. I'll be, we'll have a look at him after, but um, I, let's see what the panel says. I mean, he was projected to go number one, so he's dropped to four, which is a, a surprise in itself. Okay, so they, they, he's hesitant to actually commit to a view, just saying that when he drops, there uh, was a perspective. Oh, okay, incident with the police may have soured some teams on him, so maybe his personality is not good. Okay, let's move on to the Pistons pick. Ed, that's interesting though, Ed Jefferson dropping. And there goes Johnny Bratton, sent six foot eleven centre. Not a lot to say about him actually. I, I think we don't I don't think we scouted him. But again, looks like a, he's got a good size. Let's uh, let's move on to the next pick. Cordell Burris, got a guy we didn't we definitely didn't scout. Gone to Oklahoma. Sorry, no, he's gone, he's gone to Golden State, sorry, not Oklahoma. He's from Oklahoma State. Not a lot of actually to be said about him in terms of strengths, which is interesting. Good shot, and that's about it. So we move on to the, the Grizzlies, who are taking Griffin Smith, another guy we definitely did not scout. Six foot nine forward. Questionable hands and passing ability, but looks like he's, he's good at blocking shots. Smooth post player, good free throw shooter. Okay, so this, this draft is very um, interesting in the sense that a lot of the guys I think that were projected to go around where they were are, are, are not there. So yeah, they obviously not happy with that pick as well. It looks like the panel felt that was way, way, <laughs> way too early for him. Let's move on to the Nets, who I've taken. Tim Banks, centre. Another guy we did not look at, I don't think. Okay. Uh, next pick up is Lionel Williams, a centre, to Cleveland. Wow, this is just fascinating because the mock draft has been completely destroyed here from what was there. So I'm, I'm glad we uh, we didn't stick to the mock draft and scout the guys around because clearly, clearly... This this is a bit of a shallow draft if people are scraping the barrel here to pick up some of these players. Let's move on to the OKC pick. Yeah, basically the panel saying there's better players available, to be honest. Mike Elder. So there goes the guy. I think he was projected to go in the top three. So he drops all the way down to Oklahoma. 
which is very interesting. A seven foot two centre. I mean, I guess not height, it's not everything, but he was predicted to go much, much higher than this. Let's see what the what the panel has to say about this one. I mean, at number ten, if you're picking up a guy who's predicted to go in the top three, you've got to take a stab at it, haven't you? Yeah, they, he thinks it's a great choice despite the risk. I mean, I'm not surprised. Pretty much what I said, if, if you've got a guy who's projected to go high, yeah, they don't know why he's still on the board. Yeah, I, I, would, I kind of agree with that. So let's see who the Hawks take. Andy Hester, another guy we didn't look at. Okay. Not many weaknesses actually to say about Andy Hester. He's good size for a guard. But again, probably another guy that we were not even looking at. So we move on to the 12th pick, the Rockets pick. Taken Dan Mobley. Don't know if we did scout him actually. I don't think we did. But let's have a little look at the war room because I think there's just a lot of talent still left that we like. So Bannon's one we looked at. Jenkins and Shine is another prospect we looked at. There's not many actually that we we scouted that's still available. I know there's quite a few actually. Quite a few tanked on the scouting report it looks like. So I mean it'd be nice if we could get like Bannon. I mean he's a three star prospect. Staff said he's a four star prospect. Or maybe we take a punt on someone like Jenkins who we didn't actually scout. Who actually looks pretty good. So let's carry on moving forward. Looks like Moby's been taken. Let's see who the Kings take. They take Todd Anderson, a guard who we did scout, who I think actually tanked on the scouting as a two star from what we, we just saw. So he he's off the board. I think he's a guy that we did look at but didn't look uh, promising at all. Yeah, they're not happy with that pick either. I mean, the panel is crucifying every pick at this stage. So let's see who the Spurs take at 14. Douglas Graham from Nunn. So I'm guessing he was a G League prospect. I think he might be the first G League prospect off the board. Yeah, look, you can see here in terms of draft board, people are scraping down the bottom of the barrel of some of these guys. Is very very interesting in, in my perspective. So let's see who the Knicks take. Ah, oh, there goes O'Bannon off the board. The guy we scouted who looked really good. Well, it looked like the best prospect left on the board. Let's see what the panel has to say about him because I'd have been very happy to have taken him at seventeen. Just two picks before us as well. That's frustrating. Okay, they felt it was early. Okay, interesting. Okay, they're kind of agreeing that the front office is maybe capable enough to make their own decision, which is the first time I've, I've kind of seen that. Let's move on to the Grizzlies pick, and then we are going to be on the clock. So Patrick Holmes goes before us. And now we are on the clock. Let's see what we've got available. So we do have Tony Jenkins available, who we looks pretty good. He's a sharp shooter. We have scouted him. His passing ball handling's good. Defense is good. I mean, I think that might be a no-brainer, guys. Um, we will certainly check some of the other prospects that we've looked at. We also looked at T, who is pretty much atrocious. Farmer. Yeah, okay. I mean, look, Jenkins was projected to go six overall, so that's certainly a, a great value pickup, if nothing else. Yeah, I mean, our, st our scouting staff still have a few three star guys, but nothing, nothing to the extent of Jenkins. I think he is the guy we take. Let's have a little look. So he's got good work ethic, which is great. We'd love to see that. Coaches love him. He looks like a kind of kid who's going to work to reach his potential. Awesome. Awesome. That's exactly the kind of guy we want. 
focuses on offense times creating situations for teammates good outside stroke very good free throw shooter explosive leap up doesn't rely on his athleticism intelligent draw dropping physical specimen he's a great size for a point guard at 6'6 he's a no-brainer isn't he i think guys definitely definitely we are going to take him someone who was projected in the draft to go six overall we are managing to snag at 17 so either either our scouts have missed something and we've missed something and we're gonna you know find out soon but i think i think he's the guy we take tony jenkins welcome to chicago there we go let's see what the panel have to say on our draft pick Not many weaknesses, just lack shot blocking. But to be honest with you, for a point guard, I don't really worry about that. Let's see what the panel says. Question has been asked. There we go. Look at that. Much higher on his draft board. Maybe some bad workouts. We had a good workout with us. We, we certainly liked him. Interesting. What type of offensive player is Tony Jenkins? If he turns out to be a good player, by the way, that completely changes our free agency plans. I have to say, he ends up being our starting point guard. So, let's move on with the draft. We'll try and move for a little bit quickly now because we don't have another pick, I don't think, until the, maybe the second round we still have a pick. But let's carry on. So there goes John Shine, another guy we scouted. He goes just one after us. Then Bailey to Philadelphia. Teat. There goes Kimona, another guy who's predicted to go quite high, but only looked like a one-star prospect. Goes Dave Green. Farmer. Siler goes to the Lakers. Williams over to Phoenix. And Tyler goes to Golden State. So let's let's jump forward now to the next human pick, I think. Don't know whether we have another second round pick or not, whether we traded it, I can't can't remember. So we do have another pick. Okay, cool. So at this point we are literally just stabbing at things. I mean we might as well go with the guy the staff want, don't we? Three star guy. We might as well take a punt on a five foot eleven point guard. Why not? We can always dump him down to the G League or, or not sign him. So let's take him. Let's carry on moving to the next human pick. I don't think we do have another pick. We do not. So that ends the draft. Let's take a little look at our draftees. Let's start with the second round pick, Herrera. A one star guy. Yeah, okay. Not a lot to sing and dance about. Ball handling passing is not necessarily good enough. I'm sorry, but you are probably going to be cut. Let's take a look at Jenkins. Okay. So two star player with two and a half star potential. Okay. Quite like his passing handling ability. Defense ability looks good. He looks like a good scorer. I'm I'm actually fairly happy with that. I mean he's she he's not going to set the world alight. He's probably not going to be a starting point guard for us yet, but I could certainly see it developing. If he gets his handling and, and passing up to sort of the 70s, then he, he looks good. His IQ and discipline is all pretty good. Fairly happy with that pick, I have to say. Let's take a little look at the, uh, the, the other draftees that were taken. So Harris went number one. So Harris, number one pick, was only a two and a half star player. Pretty good all round game, actually, but not much to sing and dance about there blackman okay blackman was a high potential guy two and a half star with three uh, three and a half star potential looks like he i guess he needs he's got got a lot of room to grow into tom brown again high potential guy not necessarily ready now talent it looks like good shooting ability though actually for a forward ed jefferson the guy who's projected to go number one okay he probably was the best player in the class Three star out the bat. Defensive ability is questionable, but good stealing, good IQ, good shooting. He actually has the defender trait, which is surprising because he's only a, a 59 defensive ability. I'm guessing that's due to his stealing. Um, who else do we look at? I mean, Bratton. 
Burris. Okay, Burris was definitely a too early a pick. Griffin looks okay. Banks was definitely too early a pick. I mean, we we have done very well considering we're picking at seventeen, and looking at some of the guys who went ahead. Yeah, we've done very well at this draft, guys. I have to say, whilst we've not, Bannon was the other one we were looking at. Okay, I'm actually quite glad we didn't pick him. That IQ and discipline is going to kill his career. He's not going to be able to stay on the floor. Holmes. Yeah, we've we've done very well. We've done very well to find someone with any form of potential in this draft. Shine was another guy we looked at. Yeah, okay. Jenkins is definitely better than him. Kamona, yeah, two-star player. This was a very weak draft, I do have to say. Oh, they've done well there with Dave Green. Um, Portland there looks like a potential decent player. It was, could develop. Yeah, well, okay. This was definitely a very shallow draft. There was no real elite talent in this draft. So I'm I'm very pleased with our outcome here. We we're looking looking pretty good. So I think that will uh, wrap up our our um our, our episode here. I think next time we'll move on to contracts and and summer league and maybe free agency. We'll see how how long the summer league takes, but. As our first draftee into the Chicago Bulls franchise, Tony Jenkins, who, whilst not necessarily going to be a starter for us, I think he could be a very good bench player. Certainly when you compare him to the likes of Kobe White, I mean, there's there's not a great deal of difference. Um, you could probably say that Jenkins is a bit better shooter, but maybe not as not as good as a uh, a def not as good as a uh, pass. Uh, not as good as a rebounder, maybe, but we'll certainly see. That's going to be an interesting competitive battle, actually, between those those two, between Jenkins and, and White, actually, um, particularly in the summer league, because they'll both be there. But what do you guys think of the uh, the selection? I think I think we've got a bit of a steal there at seventeen, looking on how shallow the, the draft is. Um, and you know, what would you do with him? Would you keep him? Maybe start him? Maybe put him in the rotation? Maybe put him down to the G League, to, depending on on free agency. Always interested to hear your thoughts. Um, this is going to be a fantastic off season. I can feel it already. We've got cap now going into free agency. We'll talk about contracts and summer league next time, and we'll continue to try and uh, move this Bulls team forward. As I said, backcourt is going to be the focus. I think for free agency. Happy with how the front court is, is situated, and uh, hopefully, if we can combine that all together, we can certainly turn a team that was you know point five hundred maybe into a comfortable playoff team. And then who knows? Maybe that extra bit of talent in the in the roster might give us a bit of a le leverage in, in coming into the playoffs and maybe get us over that hump that we didn't manage to last time but uh, if you enjoyed following the episode chuck us down a comment chuck us down a subscribe and a like and then um, we'll be back next time to carry on the off season for the chicago bulls <laughs>